All right. So uh, I was sitting here today and I was thinking about something else that's kind of not relevant and going to make me sound pretentious. But I was thinking about the quarterback market, and that was partially uh, based off of uh, me tinkering with uh, my upcoming draft strategy. The biggest thing though, that we're going to talk about uh, when it comes to the quarterback market and how it's kind of changed that in uh, against prior years where uh, the the meta was to let the position be downgraded, um, probably not picking the number one quarterback until about the sixth or seventh round of most snake drafts. And then even then try and see how deep into the draft you could go without actually pulling the trigger on a quarterback, which means like, can I get to round 10? Can I get to round 11 and still get a competitive quarterback versus everybody else? And that's against the uh, possibility of the streaming option where I could uh, theoretically just uh, grab a guy off waiver wires every week and have him essentially have a coin flip chance of finishing within the top 10 uh, guys every week. Now, <clears throat> last year into this year, something that was sort of obvious and at the same time less predictable that we have the rise of the quarterback that either has a uh, high rushing upside or is going to put up like uh, Madden uh, football numbers in the passing game. So we um, looking at our top, you know, six or seven quarterbacks, which way, whatever way you want to look at it, that that's the new meta of let's go up and get a quarterback early and get one of these guys with these, these higher upsides and uh, attack our draft that way. Um, as opposed to, you know, doing the other meta, which is baiting everybody else in our draft to taking a guy uh, relatively early and then putting more positional players into our pocket. And the meta this year says, hey, uh, spend a second or third round draft pick on a guy um, who has this this upside early and then, you know, be the guy that has a positional advantage every week against the guy who's going to either try and stream or get one of these lower end guys. So my thoughts on that this year are, uh, well, you either need to be super aggressive or you need to be super passive. And that's based off the prior meta that's been going on. So, you know, if you are thinking about getting a quarterback, like you're, you're really pushing yourself up to say like, I'm going to go pull the trigger in the let's shall, shall we say like early second round. Not that something that I'm, I'm planning on doing, but if you take advantage of the draft and you set the meta, you're going to start the run on quarterbacks, which means that you're going to cause uh, an equal and opposite reaction where there's going to be at least one guy available earlier than he would have been able to be had you waited on quarterback because everybody else is going to have to in your, your league is going to have to start pulling the trigger on quarterbacks. So you're going to be able to get that six seventh round guy um that that shouldn't have been available because everybody else is going to be pushed up now that this is going to be relative to adp and you're going to have to be able to pinpoint that guy ahead of time but uh by taking advantage of the meta and saying i want to go get a patrick mahomes or i want to go get a jalen hurts or a josh allen i can control that and overall the value of quarterbacks is much higher it has always been much higher than anybody getting credit for has been giving it credit credit for during the meta of downplaying the quarterback position because quarterbacks have a tendency to play, score the most amount of points in fantasy. Their apples to uh, apples uh, scoring output is, is the foundation of your weekly, you know, uh, uh, scoring line. So in this case uh, we do want to overvalue quarterbacks. We always should have been overvaluing our, uh, valuing quarterbacks relative to when we were downplaying them in the meta um this year we've just slightly overvalued them and so instead of them being like third or fourth round draft picks where they probably should be going uh now they're being pushed up into like like i said the the second round of some drafts to go get your 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 patrick uh patrick mahomes your josh allens your your jalen hurts and you can see in the espn meta and again espn is a nice normie league where these guys are going mid third round of a 10 team league to early th th third round of a uh or, or early to late second round to third round of you know a snake draft so in this case like if your strategy has to do with being hyper aggressive go out take the guy early set 
the market because the, again, this is going to have an effect on the rest of the guys in your league. They're going to, if they want to have one of these um, you know, super weapon quarterbacks, they're going to have to go out and waste capital to go get them. And at the end of the day, it's probably not going to hurt you overall. You're going to get a guy, especially because the running back position is being downplayed this year. So the other thing we, we want to talk about is we have to uh, you know, uh, sabotage the market by going out and getting the guy ahead of time. So instead of anybody trying to be in these snobbier leagues where they're like, well, I'm going to push these guys down the board, you're going to you're gonna start the run. And that's important too. But the other thing to talk about is the fact that like, and this is a big thing about fantasy football is I need to take as much control of my ability to win as I can. And part of what I need to do is sabotage uh, my opponent's rosters by doing things that are not necessarily going to be beneficial to me um, one-on-one, but they are going to be beneficial because my, uh, the other guys are not going to be able to, to put guys on the field. So that's the other thing to look at. If I take a Patrick Mahomes early, I never have to see Patrick Mahomes be used against me. And to go a step further, depending on how you are viewing your ability to go find value deeper in the draft, that taking a Patrick Mahomes, um, and pairing them with a, uh, a guy who drops in your league, for instance, um, if we could get a Lamar Jackson in the fifth, like I'm never going to have to see Lamar Jackson or, or Patrick Mahomes. Now, again, this has to do with uh, more roster construction than it does lineup construction because there are people that are out there will be like, I, I would never do that because I'm passing up on X. I don't care what I'm passing up on. I don't want to see those points used against me. So, so again, the value of the position or the player at the position that I'm drafting, it has less to do overall with uh, how it, how it affects me to win and how it uh, versus how it affects my opponents to lose. Now, even if you have a league where there's an ability to draft or uh, excuse me, that you actually trade in your leagues, this gives you great leverage down the line. But again, can you pinpoint guys? Now I've been vacillating back and forth about having a uh, two quarterback build this year. Um, most years I do have qu- two quarterback uh, builds coming out of the draft. It really just depends on how um, I can, I can put them together. Um, before I realized that Justin Herbert and Deshaun Watson had the same bye week week five, which is too early for me. I was going to target both Herbert and Watson and the amount of capital that I was going to spend uh, for both guys would be re- reflected on my inability to go out and spend that on other positions. But I would have two guys that definitely had the ability to go compete with these super weapons above them, but they were being evaluated. And this is in most drafts below um, the those top five, five, six super weapons. So if I can get a Justin Herbert, say, and, and this is an ESPN league, so take it as you will. If I can get a Justin Herbert in the, in the you know, uh, you know, sixth, seventh round of the draft, and I can follow up with a Deshaun Washington in, in a, a seventh or eighth round of the draft. I'm I'm set at that position, and hopefully, like they're just lottery tickets to me. One of them needs to pay off as a top five pick. Obviously, I don't have the the ability because of the week five buy, but that's what my thought process is. Now, once I get beyond uh, Watson, Trevor Lawrence is sneaky, but um, his rushing upside. But uh, my problem with Trevor Lawrence is I, I kind of think that the team's overall offensive production is capped because um, even if there's a, a greater amount of rushing ability that comes out of ETN and, and uh, I think it's Tanks Bigsby, um, I'm, I'm, I, I, it's not going to go to Lawrence. So I need either a, a, a spike in uh, passing efficiency, which Trevor Lawrence is going to end up with a, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, more more passing touchdowns, or I need Trevor Lawrence to increase his rushing ability, which is probably not something anybody wants him to do. And then he gets more yards and he gets more touchdowns, which puts him into those you know Madden type super weapons league. And I don't think either one of those are going to happen. Now, Justin Herbert, why I like Justin Herbert is because he could get into this really rarefied air of uh, you know leading the league in and passing and and touchdowns. So so at that value i'm okay with deshaun watching he can be about four thousand yards passing with about five five six seven hundred yards rushing i'm okay with that i think that's a good floor or um or floor to ceiling um risk 
for Deshaun Watson going at a quarterback eight at, at, at his value. And then you know, the guys above that, Justin Fields, is heavily based off of, of his turnovers and his progression in the running game. And if he can stay healthy, same thing with Lamar Jackson. Joe Burrow is just going to be that guy uh, that, that is very similar to Justin Herbert. But you know you're you're going to be spending you know a, a much higher pick to go get Burrow, uh, Jalen Hurst, Josh Allen, and Patrick Mahomes. In my opinion, they're they're too pricey for the risk that uh, they're going to get injured. And I have to even if I if I go out and I spend the the pick on them to go you know like I said somewhere between the early second to to, to late second to go get these guys to make sure because I want to build my roster that way. I have to turn around and I have to. Uh, hedge my bet and spend another high value pick on that position. And there's only going to be so many guys that are going to be able to compete with those guys. Like you can take Tua off the board um, as the 13th over, overall quarterback. Cause he's just not going to have the rushing upside. Daniel Jones might. Um, and then there's some sneaky guys late besides Anthony Richardson, which I'm a little back and forth on because you have a Kenny Pickett that sneakily had, has higher rushing upside and, and probably is going to have a little bit higher uh, passing volume. Well, definitely will. Cause he's going to play the games. Um, so like I can wait on a Kenny Pickett because on a lot of leagues um that are not best ball, uh, you know, he's gonna go undrafted and I can shove him in my on the, the bottom of my roster rel- relatively early on. Um, so I can build that if I if I am gonna go get a Patrick Mahomes, I might go you know, throw my last round pick on a Kenny Pickett to hedge my bet against either injury of Patrick Mahomes or even and this is something that, that people don't like to talk about is that some of these higher picks uh, do have a bust chance just because of lack of performance and Justin Fields last year, or excuse me, Justin Herbert last year was being talked about as the number one overall quarterback. And he definitely disappointed. So even your Patrick Mahomes, your Josh Allen's and your Jalen hurts do have that, that pay possibility if you spend on them. But also, like I said, uh, be aware that like uh, we can uh, sabotage our opponents by taking these guys early and then knowing what pinpoint guys like the, this year because of the running back market, for instance, um, your Miles Sanders. And I've seen the snob leagues, guys like Miles Sanders, um, Cam Akers, uh, you know, Damian Pierce even are going in like not just the fifth round, but they're going in the sixth, seventh round of drafts um, in these snob leagues uh, because the, the wide receiver market has been uh, the, overvalued to such a degree. And we're going to talk about these other positions later on. But just some thoughts about how I would attack the quarterback market this year.